Okay. Well, last presentation. So last mini workshop. Okay, so I'm gonna breeze really quick. I know you guys are tired, probably wanna go home, but I think this is this things are going to introduce a really cool tools that you can use. And at the end, I'm gonna put my email address. So if you want the journal article and the resources that I'm using, I can send them to you. Okay. So um, basically here. These are the sources that I'm using for this presentation. It's, um, it's a journal article, Exploring the Interaction Equation, Validating a Rubric to Assess and Encourage Interaction in Distance Courses, um, designed by Rob Lear and Wiki. Um, they are both instructions in educational technology. And there's another tool that I have for university and I was talking about the equivalent of you know workload and activities mm -hmm. um, so basically what what are the things that you believe make a course engaging for students it's the first question that I want to I want to see what what do you guys think any ideas my recording. It says it's recording. It says that yeah. you are. It is recording. Okay, good. A student engagement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, a lot of it has to do, you know, the content. If they can see the purpose of the class, the interaction with other students. It, there's so many factors that can affect, you know, uh, interaction. You know, the interaction with the professor. The type of activities that you include in, in the in the class also the workload and today we're going to focus on just two elements that that will make a course really engaging which is the interaction and also um, the workload okay so you know some of the research mentioned in the articles um, in the publication suggests that an increased interaction in distance learning courses is associated with higher achievement and student satisfaction. And also uh, one of the course design factors that contribute to student satisfaction in online courses is related to specifically instructor student interaction. So that is very, very important. Um, Really, what we were talking about when we were presented on VoiceThread, the fact that, you know, do students really like that type of interaction? Yes, at first they might feel really uh, not wanting to do it, but they need to, as we all do, that warm up time to get used to the activities that we're going to be doing to the interaction. So something that we're going to, I'm getting ahead of myself, but something that we're going to be seeing is that we need to give students that practice time to get used to the technologies and the things that we're gonna be using. Okay, um, so I'm gonna skip this question and I'm going to introduce the rubric right away. Um, let me see, I click here. Okay, so the rubric is assessing different aspects of uh, interaction in a course. So the social, social and rapport uh, building design for interaction the instructional design for interactions, the interactivity of technology resources, the evidence of student engagement, the evidence of, and, and the evidence of instructor engagement. Okay, so let's go one by one. And the first one is so, social and rapport building design for interaction. And what I did here is put the low level of the rubric and the high level. We're gonna read it and then we can, we can come up with ideas. So how could you do that in your, in your class, right? Uh, so when stu we talked uh, in the previous workshops that students learn from each other, not only in the classroom, but they learn outside when they go to the library, when they go to the coffee shop. So it is important to, to have them socialize and create a setting that can minimize that sense of isolation and loneliness that they have when they're taking online courses. Um, my husband studied fully online to his bachelor's degree. And some of the things that he really liked, it was like just getting in touch with one of the classmates and working on something um, and providing those, that platform for them to be able to do that and communicate, it's, it's really important. Okay, so let's read the low interactive qualities. So the instructor does not encourage students to get to know one another on a personal basis. 
no activities require social interaction or are limited to brief introductions at the beginning of the course. And high level will be in addition to providing for exchange of information and encouraging student student and instructor student interaction, the instructor provides ongoing course structures designed to promote social rapport, rapport uh, among students and instructors. So knowing this, what will be some of the things that you could do in your class to make that social interaction in your online class? I was just thinking, I had the students do a brief introductions of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I did this semester. Mm -hmm. And I think later on we're doing, they, each one has to do like a root cause analysis. Mm -hmm. And see if instead of on discussion board, having the one page summary, maybe have them each add to the a voice thread on the case summary what they're doing. Mm -hmm produce some more introduction yeah that would that would be great engagement yes using the discussion board which yep. I thought about you know using the voice thread Mm -hmm. yes and so they can see each other see who they're talking to and create a little bit more of a personal connection that will be yeah that's a great idea any anything else i think really um having ongoing discussions in your class and it does not necessarily have to to do it has to be related with the content but if you can relate it to them to their experiences that they could they feel like oh yes i want to share this happened to me and then you can relate it to the content as well that will make that social aspect of it more evident and also uh some people are using a lot of social groups for instance you know a facebook group where they can just you know uh, message each other and say, hey, did you do this assignment or did you do that? Things that you do in your in your face-to-face -face class, you know, hey, did you understand that? I don't I have no idea. Do you want if you, can we meet and, and do something? Create that platform where they can socialize, when they can do that. That is, you know, uh, important aspect of it. Don't so, you find to do that on a blackboard where they are doing at least in my class on discussion forum, they're doing that kind of thing, posting questions back and forth to each other. And sometimes they answer the questions before I even get back to mm -hmm. other students do. So sometimes I'll just read what they're posting versus posting a comment unless I see that they're not clear on their comment. Yeah, and, and that, is, that is a really good um, also way of addressing that. You can include, you know, the discussion board, just like uh, people call it. I remember like when, when online education started, they call it like the cyber cafe or something like that, where students can just go and, and you know, ask questions. And some faculty even um, give them extra credit for the students who are checking that forum and replying to it. And that, that's a way of incentivizing that, that aspect, that social aspect of your class. Okay, so the other aspect of the rubric would be instructional design for interaction. So including activities that are designed to encourage and support and even require, require that interaction between students. And I know that some of our faculty have really large uh, classes. So having like small groups would be a way of making it more, more doable. So let me read the low uh, interactive qualities, the high qualities, and then let's talk about how, what, what things we could do. So low interactive qualities, instructional activities do, no, do not require two-way interaction between instructor and students. They call for one-way delivery of information and students' products uh, and students' products based on the information. So the high level would be, in addition to requiring students to communicate with instructor, instructional activities require students to develop products by working together cooperatively and share results and feedback with other groups in the class. So what things could we do to make the class more, like, I don't know, activities that you could introduce in your class that, that would force students to collaborate? Well, right now I have the, the online course I'm teaching, they work on this project together. Mm -hmm. Like They're also, that same group is assigned to the discussion board to do. So they know each other. So they know each other, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, that is a really good idea. Absolutely. Um, of course, uh, I'd had them do uh, online wikis. Mm -hmm. they, everybody is required to participate. You can see, you know, who and how much participation is there. Uh, right. Wikis have been, we've done uh, online uh, pharmacies, basically, for our biology courses. They went in and basically been assigned a certain uh, pharmaceutical brand or something like that. They're supposed to go in and research that and then bring mm -hmm. that information into the wiki. So nice. basically it forces them to collaborate. Yeah. They have to work together on that. How is that going? Uh, actually, it's done well. It's gone really well. It's Good. knocked down on the, the slacker effect because everyone's like, hey, you know, we need you to get your information mm -hmm. in. And basically, and they end up learning a lot more than uh, they bargained for. So, mm -hmm. yeah, really well. Good. Good. That's, yeah, because when they, not only the, the collaboration, but the research part, mm -hmm. it's so important. It's not just like reading the text. No, they're seeing the, the practical aspect of whatever they're learning. So, they have a few skills too with the wiki, even because they're like, oh, I didn't realize you could do this and that with mm -hmm. it. Oh, so, yeah, it's. Exactly. Positive. And I wanted to put the slide in here because, you know, something, a tool that is free and you can have your students uh, use, and it could be something optional, but that they can work together using Google Hangouts. So Google Hangouts, you can have up to 10, 10, 10 people video conferencing and then use Google Documents and you can work together in the same document, like what you mentioned in Wiki. So that's the way of collaborating and you can make it real time as well. So Again, it doesn't have to be something that at first you would demand them to do, maybe, maybe a little bit later, but the more they get used to working like that, the, you know, the better, and that you can create that, that sense of community. Okay, so interactivity of technology resources. So that's another aspect of the rubric. So research shows that abs uh, absence of immediate feedback and nonverbal cues can stress can cause a lot of stress among students and it's why interactivity is measured by technologies that allow immediate feedback where you can actually see the person so a middle point on on this uh, so the low level would be you know facts web pages and all technology that will be one-way delivery uh, the high interactive tools would be the ones that allow two-way exchange of text information, visual technologies, uh, so video conferencing, every, anything that would be synchronous, right? So a middle point, we would have, you know, the chats, the discussion boards, and I think a little bit over that, it will be VoiceThread. VoiceThread is not quite uh, synchronous, but it allows you to, be, to see people. It allows you to, to have that uh, verbal and even, like, visual aspect of you know, uh, communication. So again, you know, uh, I'm not going to ask you again. We introduced you to some of the tools. You can use Zoom. You can use VoiceThread. There's so many things that you can do for your class. And the important thing is to give students that time to get used to the technology and warm up. That way they don't feel frustrated without being penalized, you know. So just, you know, hey, let's practice. Introduce yourself. Do something that they can, uh, you know, get used to that. Okay, so evidence of student engagement. Um, so the low aspect of this, again, would be when the students are just replying to messages just because they have to. But a high interactivity course would be the, when students participate because they want to. So it's not only the required posting, but also the, they, because it's something that they like and they're interested about, they just go and you don't have to even like initiate the, the the conversation so something that you can do is to as as i mentioned before relate that relate your discussions your activities to their experience related to something they're interested in and i know it might be difficult in some subject areas but we need to find a, a middle a middle ground where they can learn, but at the same time, see the purpose, see the benefit, and, and be engaged, right? Um, any thoughts on this? 
you know, we are, we are responsible to make it a little more engaging the course for our students. Um, and I know that it's really, and it's something you're going to see, if you want me to send you the results of the, of this rubric, they apply this rubric to four courses. And some of the results is that it's not really about the technology that they're using, but more about what kind of questions uh, fact instructors are asking, how they're engaging the student, what kind of activities. So the technology that they use had like very little to do with, with the, the results from the students. The students actually fill out the rubric and gave um, the evaluation for, the, for those courses. So that's something to have in mind. And also the evidence uh, of instructor engagement. So here is basically talking about how not only how much you answer to students' questions, but more about the quality of, the, of, of your answers. Like how it's not just like giving them student an answer, but did you really help them? Do they really feel help? Sometimes you are helping them, but they don't feel that way. How do you make them feel that, that you're really helping them? And part, an aspect of this is like how fast you answer to, to the request. Um, and if they really feel like you are uh, taking the time and considering their issues, right? Okay, so any questions so far? Those are the five aspects of interactivity that are evaluated in the rubric. And again, I can uh, send you that research um, and you can implement it in your class. The students you, uh, fill out the evaluation and they fill out the rubric and, and you can also get access to the results there. Okay, so another thing that would really impact the engagement of students is the workload. And that's something that I, as an instructional designer, also struggle with advising faculty. So having a tool that will help you um, decide if you're, or take into consideration if you're giving them too much uh, workload or not is really, is really helpful. You know, this is not set in stone, but it's something that will help you. So, you know, here, this is just um, the chart. So you got, for instance, you know, blogs and journals. So if you have students do uh, really, you know, reflections, one private posting would be half hour of instructions. One share posting uh, where they're required to read all classmates posting will be one hour of instruction as well. So now you can, you can kind of measure if I'm expecting students to spend this much time, then this is how I need to translate it to my uh, online course. And again, this is just a guide. It's not like it's always going to be that way, but it's good to have a starting point, right? So I'm not going to, not going to go over all of those. I'm just going to uh, email those to you if you are interested. And um, here's my email. So just let me know if you want me to send you both of those tools, the rubric and also the charts uh, for, um, you know, to, kind of assess your the interactivity of your course. So any questions, thoughts? Johan? <laughs> you did a really good job. Yeah. Thank I you. I like the way you present like, you know, research findings support the suggestion rather than, you know, I, I suggest you to do this based on my experience. Right, right. More convincing. Yeah. No, so, that is very important. That's something that you know, like faculty ask, uh, you know, what, so you're saying this was the research that supports what you're saying. So that's, it's very important to, to also provide that kind of information. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, if we don't have any other questions, I think, um, I want to thank you for staying. You guys stay in the four mini workshops. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope, I hope you learn uh, something, like you can get away something, um, hopefully, right? Is there anything that you think like you're going to apply in your class from any other workshops? Probably, yeah. But what, yeah, I don't know. I've got notes here. I've got yeah. a whole process. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to sink in, yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. 
So, you know, if you need help, just email us. Um, let me put also the email from our office. It will be... So, deal help at usi.edu. So, if you need technical training, we talked a lot about voice thread. You can email deal help at usi.edu. And we can also have like, um, give you like a one-on-one -on -one training and get you started with that. So. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Well, have, a, have a great rest of the day. Bye. Bye-bye.